Hi, I'm Am Gravelny, joined here by Steve from our Developer Tools Thanks. team, uh, specifically .NET Developer Tools, and uh, one of the primary drivers behind the uh, AWS Toolkit for PowerShell, actually. So we're here to, to talk about PowerShell. Uh, how do I install your, your wonderful toolkit? Okay, Steve? well, these days we use the PowerShell Gallery. Okay. So we currently vend two modules to the gallery, AWS PowerShell, which is for Windows PowerShell, versions 2, 3, 5, sure. uh, or AWS PowerShell .NET Core. And that's for PowerShell 6 on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Right. They're ident essentially identical what modules. I'm using. It's really using. Um, recently, we also, by the way, published a new module, AWS Lambda PS Core, for writing your Lambda functions in PowerShell. That's super so cool. So go check that out. Yeah. Um, now, to get started with this, it's pretty quick. You just run the install command, the gallery install command. So I'm running PowerShell 6 here, so I'm going to use the .NET Core module. OK. Enter, I will be installed and ready to go. Amazing. Now, obviously, I need to configure credentials and region. Because right. it's resource are region based, right? So we have a, com a command that calls set AWS um, credential. Whoops, if I could type that properly. <laughs> set AWS credentials. Okay, and that will give access key secret here and let you store it as a credential profile. Right. That you can then reload and use. And also a set default AWS region that lets you set the region you want your shell to be in context of. Okay. okay? But all the command is take access key secret key region. So you can Crams. do one-off commands. You can override, sure. yeah. Now, once you've got them installed, there are over 4,000 commandlets. Wow. All right, okay. across that's... the vast majority of AWS service APIs. So that's how a lot. I, how do I get the service right. that I'm looking to, to work So with? the way that we work is we apply a prefix to the commandlet noun. So okay. some of these are obvious, like EC2 or S3. Sure. Some of them right. are not quite so obvious. So sometimes you'll be working and you'll think, oh, I want to work with, say, a certificate service, but I don't know what right. the, the prefix for the commandlet is. So we have a commandlet called get AWS commandlet name. And that takes a service parameter. And here you can type one or more words with a regex if you need to. Okay. So I'm going to use certificate. And you can see here it's listed uh, commandlets for two services to do sure. with certificates, right? Uh, I could also use the service noun prefix like S3 or EC2 if I knew it. Right. Um, but one other useful feature that it has is when you're looking at AWS service documentation, you can sometimes see a CLI command. So it can actually translate the CLI command. So AWS CLI. Uh, let's say it was going to be EC2 describe instances that I found on one of our documentation pages. Right. Okay? Instances. And that will give me back the corresponding PowerShell oh, commandlet. Translates for you. Translates for you, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I have a lot more experience with the AWS CLI, so that, mm -hmm. that's really helpful to, to include mm -hmm. that as well. We talked earlier about doing about two uh, two things that, mm -hmm. that are pretty common actions. Yeah. Can you show us some things? Yeah, so one of the things that people tend to like to do is tag their resources and right. then get a collective view of those resources. Yes. So we can do that fairly easily with a command called get ec2 tag. And this commandlet takes a filter. And that filter is just a hash table. And because we're searching on a tag, we're going to give it prefix tag name and the values. And what I'm going to be looking for here is I have a TFS test server that I've been playing around with. I just want to find out all the resources attached to that TFS server. Oh, so wow. you can see the instance and the volume. Um, one of the common things that people like to do is to upload content to S3. Yes. So we can do that very easily. We have a write S3 object commandlet, and it takes the name of a bucket, which I've created earlier on. Uh, let's say 0928, I think is my name of my bucket, uh, key prefix, because we're going to put this, this is going to be a folder folder upload. Sure. So put everything under one key prefix. I want to recurse, and my source folder is where I'm currently sitting. Now under the hood, this is using the multi-part API uploads automatically for you. Detects the size. It detects of the, the size of the object and switches between put object and multi-part automatically. You don't That's have to really, worry about it. That's really useful. Yeah. That's really cool. So a lot of power here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of opportunities to script and automate things with PowerShell. Mm -hmm. And uh, be sure to check out the new PowerShell runtime for Lambda. That's yep. also really exciting. Yeah. But uh, thanks for joining us, Steve. And uh, it's you. been a pleasure. Yeah. You're welcome.